Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today. It's Grandpa Butler. We're going to do a little watercolor with uh, permanent ink uh, etching in it. Uh, Three-stage procedure. We get an object, draw it, and then we color the object with our wa uh, water-soluble crayons and dab them up. And then the third stage, we put in a background here to our object. And what I've started here on is a spotted tui. It's a beautiful um, uh, bird found all over the West year-round. Uh, and it has, it's called spotted because it has white markings on it. So what I'm going to do is I made a quick overall sketch. What I'm going to put in right now is I... Uh, put in a field where difference between the white and black. I'm going to put in some distinctive markings here uh, for the white spots here. And Grandpa is going to try and be very careful and not color those in right now. but. Grandpa being Grandpa, you know how it goes. Uh, grateful for uh, technical advice from my grandson Soren and for my grandchildren who, when they moved away, thought art lessons would be nice, and so this is for them. But of course, anyone is welcome to join us. And the pictures that you see today are I'm going to put up on my Grandpa Butler Etsy account here, and so you're welcome if you're interested to, uh, to buy them, uh, the originals. So here we go here with some foot, and I think I'll get a slightly thicker kind of thing, and uh, I don't want to apologize for my neuropathy too much, but if you see me shaking, don't, don't worry about it, it's just the thing. So I have read around that, and so I probably want to do before I proceed any further is put some red in that eye right there. And uh, get in some of the beautiful feathers as the bird of, as we sketch. So the little particular small dots are, are indications to Grandpa that he needs to be careful there. And if he can remember not color them all in. So the spotted toe here loves insects and plant life. And uh, I guess that's a keto diet for birds, right? I haven't fried many insects. I think a few ants on survival excursions, but other than that, not much. Okay, so a few lines here. And come down here, and a red breast on this on this bird here. Uh, beautiful feathers coming underneath. Uh, we're going to have his cleats here wrapped around uh, an evergreen we'll have coming through here. I won't color, draw it all in because I want to have some leaves coming out through here. And uh, here's a tree here. And we'll just put some structure to it.
Okay, so I think we've got most of uh, most of that done. So what we need to do is erase it. Put the lines that we had in for our kind of outline. Then we need to color the bird. And then finally put in some background, the bird and the branch he's sitting on of this uh, fir tree. Okay, so this red color down here is uh, also found on his chest. Now notice when I color here, I am not trying to make it smooth and quite the opposite. I am trying to use the crayons here, the watercolor crayons, to give it some texture. And so I will try not to uh, make it uniform. I'll try and leave some pigment in there as an indication of my love for the bird here. And its tail is largely black. Uh, black can be uh, kind of uninteresting, so I'm going to put some crimson in there too. There's some brown in here on some of these feathers. And so maybe I'll go around here and put some brown. Remember, Grandpa? Remember to leave those little white spots white? I hope I can. If I don't, tough. I won't go and redo things. It's not, not the way I want to do this one here. Okay, he has a beautiful black head, the spotted toady, and again, it comes back to these feathers here, so I'm going to try and get the feather structure in there by doing the crins in this manner here, and uh, I think it's just more interesting. Got a bunch of black, put some dark blue maybe, or in this case we're going to put some dark red in there. Sort of liven it up a bit, okay? Literally, the, in the light, the bill is a light blue, so we're going to put that in there. But highlight the black around it. And I think we're getting close on the black down here. The legs here are also kind of reddish, so we'll do that here and dress them up later on when we look at the final pen inking here. So we'll go between those with a little bit as well. Okay. Now I'll coach Grandpa. Remember. So you want to dab uh, generally, except maybe when you're doing uh, water and maybe sky. Otherwise, you don't want to do hard strokes across different areas of colors. And so trying to avoid that here. And I'm trying to uh, leave some of this brown in between the spots here, which we're trying to leave as white. And there's a little bit of white down here, so We'll try and leave that as white as well. Okay, I'll come back. We'll do the tail and come back and do the head here. So what we want to do is kind of just, this is it's Grandpa, right? So it's impressionistic. It's uh, not like it's solid art, but it's fun art. And that's what we are doing is fun art. So again, we're stroking here and leaving some of the pigment behind because that's part of our process of doing this style of fun art. 
you know, timely, you know, kind of fun, kind of fun way. Okay, so we got that, we got that. I think we got our bird in. Let me get our brush here and brush up the feet here and down. Now for the the branch part, okay. I'm gonna have a bunch of green coming over here, kind of this mossy green you might get with Norway firs or firs or pines when you're doing an impressionistic that are gonna be coming out here. But I'm not going to try and spend a lot of time on that because it's the bird that I want to emphasize. And what the spaces I'm leaving on either side here are the, the branch that's showing through in the picture. Okay, and underneath here, and underneath here. Okay. Okay, and now let's get some brown here. To do our tree, and again, we're using the Krenz sort of dual capacity put color down, but also put kind of shape to things, put life in things. So, we're going to leave some of the pigment behind that we put down here. And here we go, having fun. And uh, we'll do that, and then we'll do the background. So what I'm thinking for a background is sort of uh, sunlit uh, shades. And uh, with the typical blues and greens and stuff in there. So... Here we go on our tree. On this one, yeah, you can stroke downward following the grain of the tree here. And that leaves some of that pigment there. And we may spot that up at the end. We'll have to wait and see how things are going. So here are some of the leaves, branches, needles coming out. And uh, how impressed you are with this impressionistic painting. So I'll cut Grandpa some slack, right? Remember, Grandpa doesn't have much imagination, but he has a lot of fun from time to time. Okay. And so those are, uh, and maybe what we need to do is occasionally draw a brown line there to sort of suggest uh, these leaves are connected by twigs here to the main branch that's connected to the tree. Okay, enough of that. Well, let's do the background here. Okay, the background here is we, we don't want to we don't want to get it too too dark, so we're going to put some mountain over here. That comes into another mountain there. So the blue one will be in the background is what Grandpa's thinking here. And really when you do this, you know, I'm using two separate pictures, one for the object, one for the backgrounds. I like mountains, you can't tell. But uh, it's always better to, I, for Grandpa at least, to have uh, an actual picture of a mountain when he's doing kind of mountain-like things. And because there's so much wonderful detail in those, right? They're just magnificent. And I'm going to have 
this coming down into some trees here. This is going to be a, a kind of a cliffy thing here, and there'll be trees down in here. We'll be filling up the cliffy thing, and we'll bring that down, and then we'll bring the trees through there. And what other colors? Well, I want it to be a kind of uh, end of day thing with some shadows and different views in different areas here. So I'm going to put just rough images of some using a Kind of like a, almost a pink, right? It's a salmon color green here. And I'll put some here. Contrast against the bird and the trees. It'll be rising up under that. And then it, I think I'd like to have a sort of another color in here along with my salmon. And this is kind of a mauve purple-ish kind of color here that I'm including up in here. I'll do it here and there, just uh, hoping that it turns out looking okay when we come back to it. It looks okay in that form. Now let's color those up and then let's put in our trees and color them up. So I come along the ridges here and get the outline of the things. And I'm gonna really gonna mix this salmon color in with the blues. If you don't want to do that, you should do the salmon first here. And then the blues after. Well, here I want to leave some of that kind of beautiful western high plateau desert kinds of views up in here and and they're going to be contrasted with the you know, where the mountain goes over the edge and again notice I'm leaving some pigment here uh, some of the structure of the painting and that's going to help me so I don't take up too much time. One of the things I don't want to do is I don't want to overpower everything with a too strong shades of blue here or messed up lines between my mountains. So I'm going to turn it sideways here. So I mess it up in a different way. How's that? Upside down mess up. I think that was a thing Bob Ross used all the time, the upside down messed up technique. I'm not sure. I haven't seen Bob Ross videos in 40 plus years, so I have no idea. I haven't done art in longer than that. Okay, so we got kind of the mountains there. I kind of like that look. Now I'm going to put in some sort of pine trees going through here. So my girlfriend of 50 years and wife of 49 years. I know she's been my, yeah, that's right. Been my wife for 49 years and she's still my girlfriend. Is pointed out that, you know, the trees are fun, but when you have a forest, if you can give the impression of a forest, that's really cool without drawing all the individual trees in. So that's what I'm trying to do with this emerald green and stick here and different pressures here, different places, and I'll kind of try and be careful with my brush. Let's see how that looks now as a forest coming out of here. Get our brush in here and get the bottom of the forest here coming through here. Uh, okay, and come around here and get the top of the forest. Now on the final third, final step of this third stage of painting, what we want to do is we want to highlight a little bit of the bird's features by going over again with a little bit of 
in here and there. And we'll do that. And then we'll be... Uh, yeah, I think we've got most of it here. Touched up a few spots here and there. Um, and that's our spotted tohi. And that's at the end of this bit of fun. Please join me again for some more fun. Thanks. Love you all. Bye.